Hey guys, Mr. Mises here. Um, no, no video screen on me today. I'm doing it from a different computer today, but um, I want to go over today with you inverse trig functions, and this is going to be the first part of a two-part video. So um, right now we'll call this 6.6.1 if you're in my class. So what I want to do is just we're going to look at just the inverse trig functions and then um, define their domain and ranges, and then look to see how we would use them. Um, and then tomorrow I'll go over some more in-depth problems and some more difficult problems. So let's look at sine of x here. I've got the graph of sine of x here. And I, what I want you to notice is if we took, and I actually I have to actually come out to my, my screen here. If I took this graph, and I, I want you to remember, if you recall, the domain of sine is all real numbers, and the range is negative 1 to 1. Right, because it goes up to here, up to here, down to here. And um, when I want to do the inverse of that, the range of the inverse is going to now be negative infinity to infinity, but the domain is going to be negative one to one, right? The, the domain and range switch. So we're going to take a look at that and how that comes about. And actually, the range is not going to be negative infinity to infinity, and you'll see why. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at what we would do. And notice that the, the x here, x represents the domain, right? And y represents the range. So I'm going to just, you know, a simplistic idea here is to take this and let's flip them because, well, that's what we do with inverses. So I'm going to go ahead and, and turn this graph around like this. And notice here that if I turn the graph around, I have a function that's, well, I have something that's not a function. It doesn't pass the vertical line test, right? We got, we got a line that goes through here and crosses twice. So an inverse, in this case, is not going to be a function. But we obviously have an inverse function. So the question is, how do we do that? How do we make an inverse function? Well, we're actually going to take only a portion of this graph. We're going to take from here to here and we're going to cut it off and we're just going to look at this part right here and so if we just look at that part our range is going to be from pi over 2 to negative pi over 2 so our inverse function y equals inverse and this is how we write inverse function of sine the range is going to actually be from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. And the domain, well, it's still going to be from negative 1 to 1. We see that negative 1 to 1. Okay, so uh, write that down. We're going to come back to it. This is, this is the important thing right here, is what the range is and the restriction on that range as we relate it to the unit circle in just a few moments. Um, that's, this is not actually what the graph looks like. Um, the graph of inverse sine looks like I got it over here. Look, no, it's not in Pandora. Um, it looks like this one here. So we're looking at the the orange one. So it's right here. Okay. So it's actually kind of flipped the other way of from what. But um, knowing what the graph looks like is not as important as knowing the restriction for the range of the graph. So let's go back and um, let's look at cosine. And we're going to do the same thing for cosine. And if I flipped cosine this way. I'm going to get the inverse cosine, okay, inverse cosine looks like this. Another way of saying inverse cosine, it's called arc cosine. There's my bell, okay, so I won't take too much longer here and then I'll pause it. And then, um, so again, we're going to have to cut it off and so I'm going to cut it off from here to here and we're only going to look at this part of the graph. Okay, so that way I have a vertical line test that passes. And so in this case, my range, my domain is going to be the same thing, right? From negative 1 to 1. But my range here is going to be from 0 to pi. 0 to pi. So this again, this is the restriction that we want to keep in mind. We want to keep in mind that cosine x is restricted from 0 to pi in the range when we look at the, next, when we look at the first example. Okay, so 
Well, okay, so let's take a look at a few examples here. Um, we got determine the inverse cosine of one half, and I'm just going to make the screen larger here. Okay, so we want to determine the inverse cosine of one half, and now what I want you to remember is that the range, the range of inverse cosine was zero to pi, and uh, what we're looking for is, is is this here is the is the input, the domain. So this is a side length. And what our output is, it's going to be an angle. So we're going to look at the unit circle. We're going to go to where our cosine, so if I was going to write this another way, it's cosine of, of x is equal to 1 half. So where, it's basically saying, where is my cosine? What angle here is my cosine going to be 1 half? And remember that the cosine is the x value, right? This is cosine and this is sine. So we're going to we're going to restrict our movement here to the first two quadrants because between 0 and pi that's our range. So we're going to look between 0 and pi and look for the x coordinate that's 1 half. So the x coordinate that is positive 1 half is right here. So then we're going to look for our angle. So the inverse cosine of 1 half is going to be equal to pi over 3 or 60 degrees. All right, let's do the same thing for an inverse sine. So inverse sine now inverse sine the range is is negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So the range is between negative pi over 2, which is here and here. So we have it labeled as 3 pi over 2, but this is really negative pi over 2. And this is negative pi over 6. And this is negative pi over 4. And this is negative pi over 3. All right, so now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to look for where is the y value, the y value equal to 1. The y value is equal to 1 right here. There it is right there. So my angle is pi over 2. So the answer to this question is pi over 2. Okay, so again, we're looking for the angle measurement given the side. Okay. So uh, what about inverse tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosecant? Well, we're, we don't really, I'm really not concerned about the, the graphs as much as knowing what the ranges are. So um, since tangent, remember, tangent is the sine over the cosine, this is going to follow the sine. Cotangent is going to follow the cosine. And secant is 1 over cosine. So it's going to follow the cosine. Then um, this is sine, it's going to follow the sine. So, for, I'm sorry, for cosecant. So cosecant has a range, inverse cosecant, I should say. Let me erase that here. All right, so here we go. Inverse tangent has a range that's between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. Inverse cosecant has the same range inverse cotangent has a range between 0 and pi and inverse secant has a range that's the same thing okay so just write these down and remember them so if you're doing the same thing you have to stay restricted to those okay all right so uh, here's my last example um, arctan of negative 1 we're gonna do the same thing here remember that the range of arctan which is inverse tan is between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So it's just like inverse sine, we're going to look right here only in these two quadrants. And we're going to look for where it's negative 1. Now, just a trick here, arctan, remember tan is sine over cosine. So we really have a ratio here. And the only ones we have, we have a root 2 over 2 over root 2 over 2. This is going to give me 1. One of these has to be negative. So either this one or this one has to be negative. Well, in this case, our y value is going to be negative. 
Um, this is going to be, remember, tangent is sine over cosine. So that's going to be y over x. So I'm looking for a negative root 2 over 2 for my y and a positive root 2 over 2 for my x. Well, that's going to be right here. And remember, this is negative pi over 4 because we're going this way. Negative pi over 4 is going to be our answer. So our answer to this one is negative pi over 4. Again, we're looking for the angle given the, the coordinates. Okay? So um, here are some practice problems for you to work on. You can find the answers to those on the WISC. Um, don't forget to, if you're in my class, don't forget to write your question for this video. Uh, that's just a reminder. Make sure you do the summary. And then uh, that's it. Otherwise, thank you for joining me, and we'll see you next time.